Hello guys, I'm Megan Graham and oh my goodness, I love when you live stream and suddenly look and see yourself. Um, anyway, just wanted to hop on this live stream. I have been getting a ton of messages on my Instagram asking me about my breast explant surgery and there were so many women on Instagram and YouTube that put together videos and uh, reels and I don't know, just little posts and information that was so comforting to me before I got my breast explant surgery. So it's kind of impromptu and I'm sure I'll do it again because I didn't announce it um, very far before my live stream, but I just wanted to pop on in case anybody had any questions, if they recently had a breast explant or thinking about getting a breast explant, had any questions for themselves or for um, friends and family and things like that. So Jeff, when did I have my surgery? My husband. May 17th. May 17th. My husband remembers it. Come here, buddy. He remembers it better than I do. And I did not, honestly, when I first heard about breast explant surgery, it was probably about a year before I had it done. And I didn't even think it was possible that anybody could get sick from their breast implants. And... I don't think that everybody gets sick from their breast implants. Um, I think some people do, and some people get really, really sensitive too. Um, but when I first heard about it, I really didn't believe that it could be a thing. And I will say, sometimes I think with my health, I don't want to say I'm the most unlucky person because I think that's kind of like a bad attitude for your own health, but I have had my fair share of health things happen. And when I first heard about breast explant surgery, I just really, I didn't want to get it done. I liked how I looked. Um, I didn't want to take out my implants and I didn't want to think that they could possibly be a problem for me. Um, I didn't even want to look at any information, see any photos, read any articles about it because I was just so sure that it could not possibly be my breast implants. Um, guys, if you are joining, please feel free to say hi in the comments. I always love when people say hi. If you feel comfortable um, telling me where you're from or why you decided to watch or anything, I love that. If you don't feel like commenting, it's fine, but it's always a really, um, a really friendly live stream if I have one. So you don't really have to worry about commenting or anything like that, but it's nice if you can. Um, if you also think of it and you can hit the like button, it makes a big difference for my videos um, to kind of like keep my YouTube going and um, have YouTube recommend my content to the algorithm. Thank you for whoever just hit that like button. Um, so, you know, when I first heard about breast explant surgery, it's really funny, but I was kind of one of those judgmental people. And my close, close friend told me about it because I was still, um, my, my issues with health started with a mold exposure and I had cleared up a lot of them with things that I had done, but it just hadn't gone away completely. And so a close friend of mine had suggested taking out my breast implants as a possibility because she said, how many, like how many other things could be making you sick? There's a foreign object in your body. And I remember kind of giving her an attitude when she said that I should consider taking them out. And I said, obviously it can't be the problem. So many people have these, there's, there's just no way. Um, and so I didn't listen to her and a lot of time passed and I wasn't even willing to look at photos or anything like that. Um, but what actually finally started happening was that I started getting physical pain in my breasts. And I've always thought that if you get any kind of physical pain, you probably should listen to it. So I wasn't really sure if they, I actually just didn't think they could be adding to any of my issues before, but I started getting like a stabbing pain in my breasts. And at that point, I finally decided that I was willing to look at it as being a possibility as something that could be adding to why I wasn't feeling well. Um, and this is just my personal belief. I don't usually think it's just one thing that's making any of us sick. So I do think that the mold was the trigger that, you know, sort of pushed me into autoimmune disease, but I don't think that in any way my breast implants were helping me um, to get healthier. And so I, when, you know, when I started getting the physical pain, that was when I finally started researching it and I found my surgeon pretty quickly. Um, I researched who I thought the best surgeons were and his name is Jay Chun. He's in Newport Beach, California. And 
I remember, I think I was like crying when I finally looked at pictures and I saw how some of these implants were coming out. And I just thought, okay, this just either way, whether this helps or doesn't help, um, it, this doesn't really align anymore with the way that I look at health and I take care of things. And I, you know, I'm very careful about all the things that I put in my body, but I was like toting around these big silicone bags. And I thought, no, well, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Hello, Nikki. How are you? Nikki says, um, I hope you don't mind if I read your comment. It says, hi, I have always considered implants, but was very apprehensive because it wasn't something natural. And so that scared me. I clicked on the video because I wondered um, what your experience was. So um, Nikki, it's so funny that you would ask. And I mean, just this is just me personally, and I can never tell anybody else you know, what they should do. Um, I got implants because I was competing. I'm a pro in the WBFF um, fitness competition federation. I'm a bikini pro. And when, you know, we don't get that skinny, if you will, we really put on muscle and you have kind of a full bikini look, but nonetheless, on the days that I showed up to complete my natural chest was just kind of deflated. And I didn't feel, I mean, I think we used to sort of dehydrate ourselves and I just didn't feel as good about myself as I usually felt. And here's the kicker. I was a natural, believe it or not, 30 double D and when I look at photos of before I got them, I just had what natural women have, which is, you know, usually a flat upper chest because unless you're sagging and I wanted something that would give me that full look. Um, but I will say, Nikki, that as soon as I got them, they just never felt like part of me. And I did. I liked the top part. I, I aesthetically liked how they looked. I did. Um, but they never felt like a part of me. And um, I will say that, so basically, I personally would never recommend somebody get breast implants. And But what I do want to say is if somebody has them, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying, you know, you could not be sick from them. So it's very possible that somebody could get sick from something and someone else might not be sick from it. And people have their reasons. So, you know, if someone had to get a mastectomy or just whatever the reason is, I'm not judging any women that decide to get them, just totally sharing, you know, my own personal experience, if you will. Um, but so for me, once I saw the photos, so on Dr. Chun's page, and if you ever follow him, the, the, the photos are really, really interesting. But on Dr. Chun's page, he showed the implants and a lot of them were ruptured and women didn't know because the scar tissue was still holding them together. Um, some of them were yellow. I'm not sure why. Some of them were green. Um, they just had a lot of different looks. And when I saw those, I just said, you know what? I don't know if these are the problem, but I do need to get them out because if there's a possibility that this is happening to me or that I could have a silent rupture, it's just, I've done everything else for my health. So I'm going to do this as well. And, um, and so I called, I had, it was, almost unbelievable. I asked for a consultation with Dr. Chun. I got a consultation probably within um, a half. He, he called me like 45 minutes after I asked for a consultation and just gave me a really calm explanation for why some women are getting sick from their breast implants. And what Dr. Chun said to me during my consultation is that breast implant illness is not in women's minds. It's actually our body trying to um, how do I say it? Our immune systems are rejecting a foreign object and physically trying to remove them. But the object, there's no way that our bodies can ever remove it, but it can create a ton of inflammation along the way. Guys, if you're just joining, hello, Megan Graham. It's nice to see you. Um, also, please hit the like button or introduce yourself if you feel like it. I know some people might want to be anonymous because they just don't like this subject or what have you. Um, by the way, I did just get this sweatshirt from Joa Brown and it's like the shortest crop sweatshirt I've ever seen. So I'm wearing a little t-shirt bra. So if I'm flashing my t-shirt bra, sorry about that. But um, anyway, so got a really quick consultation and his I just thought his explanation was so, so wise and it made so much sense. And he basically said, look, there is no guarantee. You can get these implants out. You may feel better. Many women do. Some women don't. Um, and, you know, he also likened it to, I don't know if you guys know about plastic water bottles. Thank you for that. Like whoever just did that. But, you know, every time you drink out of a plastic water bottle, the plastic, little microplastics are working their way into their water. Obviously, this isn't my chosen thing to drink out of a plastic bottle, but we're traveling. So I just do what I can. Um, but it made sense. So he was like, if you have implants inside your body, a little bit of that silicone is always going to be shearing off. It's always going to be moving into your body, which made perfect sense. 
When I first wrapped my brain around getting my breast implants out, it was so emotional for me. I felt upset. Um, I kind of wish that someone had told me. Um, I was a lot more emotional about it than I am now just because it was so distressing. And honestly, I wished I could go back in time in that I had not done it. I want to read this comment as well. Um, just me, Joe says, I, I have no complications with mine. That is awesome. Um, but I have been wanting to have them undone, but the cost is high. I hope you are feeling better. Um, I totally understand what you mean. And um, I'm glad that you're not having any complications. So that's so good. It's so true. You know, the cost is so high. And, you know, with breast implants, it's either replace them every 10 years, because that's really what you're supposed to do, or get them taken out. And yes, the cost for my surgery was really high because by the time I got them taken out, I was having some real inflammation issues um, from my breast implants, which was so weird because I didn't feel like I had a lot of issues for a long time. Um, but so I went ahead, I called, you know, I got my quote and I went to um, one of the most expensive surgeons there is just because I always feel like I want to get something done once. Um, I wanted to be the best person. And I, I watched Dr. Chun's videos. I loved his way of being. I thought he was just a great surgeon, really serious about it and all of that stuff. I think the cost of my surgery was about $19,000. Plus we traveled to LA. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot. Um, but, you know, so Dr. Chun, we spoke and then I called his office once they sent me the quote and my husband had to wrap his brain around it as well. So I didn't even tell you at first he was like, Oh my gosh, not another thing. <laughs> I can't believe this, but my health, I have done everything that I could and it still was not what I wanted it to be. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to do this. And so I called the office and I said, look, um, I got your quote and I just wanted to let you know that I would love to be on your waiting list. And if I know people cancel all the time, so if somebody cancels, I will get myself out there so quickly to get this surgery done. And they were like, actually, if you want, we have a few surgery dates that are on not optimal days about a month from now. And so you could do that. So I said, let me talk to my husband, make sure it's okay. Because obviously when you're married, you know, you do want to make sure that your significant other agrees with you. Right. And, you know, you're not just like pulling the rug out from someone and doing something when, you know, you haven't spoken to them. And so I talked to my husband, he finally wrapped his brain around the fact that I wanted to take my breast implants out. And he wasn't, he wasn't upset. I mean, he was really supportive. He said, I didn't fall in love with you because of that. So if, if you think that that could make a difference in your health, then I think that we should do it. Um, and so I scheduled it and, um, I was living in Boston at the time. Right now, my husband and I are traveling full time in an RV with our four pets. But at the time I was living in Boston. So I went ahead and scheduled my surgery. And um, all I can say is that the week before my surgery, I have never been so nervous in my entire life. It was the most scared um, I've ever been. And, you know, it was like the, <laughs> the day that we had to go to his office for my consultation, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I mean, it was like I was gasping for air. Um, he was super, super professional. We got a condo that um, if anybody ever does decide to go to my doctor and I can look for the link for the Airbnb condo that we stayed in because it was beautiful. It had like adjustable beds that reclined up and it was really comfortable. Um, but so I went to him and I really didn't know exactly what I was going to do with my surgery until the day before. And if you're just joining us, welcome. So I didn't know until the day before, and I wasn't sure, was I just going to get my implants out or was I also going to get what he refers to as a mastoplexy, which is what most people refer to as a lift. And so I just went to him and said, you know, I want you to do what you think is going to not only be the best for my health, but also if you can salvage me and make me look as good as possible, I would like that too, because I obviously got breast implants because I wanted to look good. Um, and so he recommended the mastoplexy. And um, basically he said, it's not really a lift. It's not going to bring you right back to how you were when you were 18 or 19 or what have you. Um, but um, I was just really scared because for some of you, you may know or you may not know, um, I think I personally really thought he was a great surgeon and that he was very, very precise. And he kept as much of my breast tissue intact as he possibly could, which I really, really appreciated because 
I wasn't sure of how I was going to look when I came out of the whole process. So um, basically, I am still, I'm just going to show you guys if that's not funny. I still have a little, I'm sort of sticking out my chest. Um, I still have a chest. I'm still a um, 30 double D, which was my original size. Um um, and you would not recommend them either. You said, absolutely, I would not recommend them. This was my husband's idea and social pressure since I was a teen. Not till after did I realize I was perfect before. I felt the same way. I know what you mean. Um, they only attract the wrong attention. And it's funny that you should say that because I'm so relieved. So, and I'm going to jump into like how the surgery was and things, but I'm just going to jump to how I feel now. And that is, I feel so relieved to have as close to my natural body as I can possibly have. Um, I feel lighter. I can do direct chest workouts before it, I really, it was very uncomfortable to try to do any kind of push up, any kind of chest press, um, just all sorts of things. And generally speaking, they felt uncomfortable. They felt uncomfortable from right when I got them in. When I woke up, I went to Beverly Hills for my first surgery. And I remember waking up and going, what did I do? And I constantly felt like I had just, I already had a big chest and then I had big implants on top of a big chest on my little tiny body. I'm like 115 pounds. I'm a pretty teeny tiny person. So it just didn't really feel like me the whole time. And, you know, I did go through some different feelings after I got them out because initially when you get your surgery, it's a little scary to see all those incisions and to think about what you did to your own body. Um, Nikki says, I watched your mold video and read the, and read your comment. Of course, you, you're welcome. I'm happy you're feeling better and in so much, so much control over your health. Did you research natural alternatives? Um, natural alternatives to, uh, natural alternatives to what? So, um, sorry. I always get confused sometimes when people are like natural alternatives to let me know what you mean, Nikki. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm still, okay. So I had my consult, decide to do my lift. And the day of the surgery, I was so incredibly petrified. I can't even tell you how petrified I was. Um, I was almost passing out when the doctor was marking me up because I am a very like delicate person. I get super afraid. And I think it was frustrating for the doctor just because, you know, he has probably two, I don't know if he has two or three surgeries, probably two surgeries a day. Um, I don't know what natural alternatives to implants would be, Nikki. I don't think there are natural alternatives. I was a, um, I was a double D, so I didn't need implants anyway. So I don't think there, there's no such thing as a natural alternative to implant. Um, but I had the natural alternative to my implants would have been just not getting them and just accepting that real women. And, and again, there's nothing wrong if you have implants, but that real women just don't have breasts like that. Like when you have real breasts and you lay down, your breasts lay down too. And I think that I saw so much of that, you know, perfect, like look, that plastic surgery look, and I wanted it too. Um, and now I have this different look and I'm so happy. I mean, I still, you know, do I wish I had never done it? Of course, but you can't undo exactly whatever you did. Um, so anyway, went into surgery that day. Um, I remember them talking to me about Boston. And the next thing you knew, I was waking up. The nurses had covered me in something really warm. And um, I was just comfortable. And, you know, they said, you're done. You're all done. And I felt so proud that I made it through that surgery. I mean, it was the best day. And all along the way, um, you know, I was meeting these other women on Instagram that had also, they were going through it at the same time. Like we would kind of see they were posting or, um, and so there was a community of other women and we would text each other and ask how the other was doing and, you know, what was going on. But, you know, the first day was very, very foggy. I came home, very little movement. So this was my doctor's instructions express exactly, or just specifically, if you will. But my doctor basically said, I want you to move as little as possible. So he had reattached my chest muscle, which apparently was at least partially severed from going under the muscle, which I know is gross, but it, I, and I never knew that that happened when I got my implants. So he said, you know, you could really damage this by moving too much, by holding too much. So you really need to move as little as possible. So that was the most difficult part, you know, just getting through the first few days 
where, you know, if I wanted water, my husband was holding my water for me. I, if you get this surgery done, definitely have straws, definitely plan on having someone take care of you. If you're doing, I mean, I don't know if you just do, you know, your implant removal, but I know with my particular surgery, I needed to be taken care of completely, um, for a month. So I wasn't able to be by myself for a month after surgery. And the first day was the first, I don't even know, week or two was humbling because I couldn't, I couldn't even like lean over with my arms to the sink. I had to keep my arms really close to me. My husband washed my hair. He brushed my hair. He did every single thing for me. Um, and that was really like, it, I mean, it brought us together a lot, but I had drains and my husband emptied my drains for me. I would just close my eyes and I'm so squeamish that I would just like hum the entire time. And he did those things for me and took care of me. Um, one thing that was a big surprise to me was that I was so, so swollen um, that I had bought some recovery bras in the size that I wore thinking, well, I'm getting those implants out. They'll fit me. No, I'm usually a 30 band size. I was wearing a 38 band size and my belly was really, really bloated just from the trauma of the surgery. And so I was actually borrowing my husband's. He has um, same kind of joggers that I have. I forget they're called like Viore. And I was wearing his men's large joggers every day because I could not fit in my pajama pants. So having larger things than you think you need if you get an explant is super necessary. Maybe it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happened to a lot of women that I know. Um, I had I put a few links to things that I liked. I bought way more stuff than I'm linking to. And there was a lot of stuff that was just a waste of money. Like I bought a lot of expensive surgical bras that were so uncomfortable wish I hadn't wasted all that money on um, certain bras. So I listed my favorites and I listed this particular surgery. It's almost like a tube top and it had little pockets. So you could tuck your drains into it because you don't want to snag your drains when you're sleeping. And I don't know about anyone that's thinking about getting this surgery, but also I think you just don't want to look at your drains. Like if you're anything like me, you just want them away and not to deal with them. Um, Tiffany says natural alternatives could be that fitness trainers say there are certain exercises that can naturally add some volume or lift to the female chest. I, and I don't buy into it either. So I've been a fitness pro for so long. You can do a little bit with muscle. Like you can do some things you can do incline press, you can do chest press, you can do flies. Um, but I don't think that that's going to change your chest very much. And if anything, I mean, it's fine to do it, but I think it almost can give people pecs sometimes. Like I do chest exercises, but it doesn't really give you that same volume, if you will. And I think there's different things that people can do. Like I will say, I have seen that some women like to do, um, what is it called? Uh, fat transfer. But um, for me, I just feel like there's too many complications that can happen. And at, at some point, I think plastic surgery becomes a little bit like a gamble. So if that was really important to someone, they could do fat transfer, but I've seen that there are a lot of possible side effects and issues and things like that. So um, I think when I first got them done, I wasn't sure because I felt so, so different and, you know, it was, it was hard to get used to. So I got the surgery a few days passed. Um, my husband braided my hair. He's an expert, expert at braiding hair now. And um, he was so loving. He was really, really loving and really gentle. I was not sure of what it was going to be like to have a man take care of me after a surgery. And he just did the most beautiful job. Um, I didn't really have any nausea. My doctor did give me something for nausea. Um, and I will say that I had brain fog for sure, which I haven't ever even really experienced with mold. And within a couple of days of getting the implants out, I did feel much better. So I had a lot less brain fog. Um, my eyes looked less inflamed. And I did see some really positive changes. It wasn't how it is for some women where it's just like this instant. I've seen women post pictures where they take them out and they're instantly beautiful. And like, it looks like they're a new person. I don't even really believe that personally. Maybe it could happen for a few people, but I think that all positive changes in your body usually take time. Um, and so I still feel like it was a great thing, but, um, just kind of going through the experience of like how I felt. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to jump in with any questions that you have. Um, you're not going to offend me with questions or anything like that. Um, my husband took off my bandages for me and I was petrified to see what I was going to see. 
And I think there's just a lot of emotions, you know, right after, and maybe everybody's different, but there were a lot of emotions for me right when I took them out and I saw, I guess I hadn't really looked into, so my incisions went down the breast and then there's a crescent under the breast, down the breast, but they also reattach your nipples. And that was like, whoa, I didn't know that was, or at least in my surgery they did. And that that was hard to see, but um, I can't speak for all doctors because obviously I only went to my doctor. His surgery work was so beautiful that now when I look from the front, not including the bottom crescent scar, when I look from the front, it barely looks like I had anything done. They sit a tiny bit differently. And I think I have a feeling it's because my breast implants may have displaced my own natural breast tissue a little bit. I feel like they go out a little bit more than my natural breasts ever did. So maybe mine were together a little bit more, but other than that, they look so natural and, you know, the incisions were quite noticeable at first, nothing horrible, but I remember calling my mom and just crying and crying and crying the first day. And I just said, how could I do this to my body? Not, not how could I explant, but just why did I put my body through this surgery? And I think I just had to go through that, just kind of grieving it. I'm feeling bad and feeling emotional. Um, and so every day, you know, my husband would help me. We sprayed on. I am chemically sensitive for anybody that hasn't ever seen any of my videos before. Pretty sensitive to chemicals and products. And um, one of my good friends is a dermatologist. So she recommended two products. One was BrioTech. And another one is Dr. Rogers Healing Balm. I put those in the notes. I use those instead of, I want to say, did he want me using Neosporin? I can't even remember, but whatever it was, I knew I was going to. So I used those instead. I loved those products, but the little tube of Healing Balm went really fast. So I probably went through about four tubes of that. Um, my husband changed all my bandages. He changed me every day. He did all the laundry. He did, you know, kind of fed me and things like that. Within about a week, I was able to take some slow walks and I got a little stronger every time. Um, and the, the surgery healed up, I think, so quickly. The most difficult part was just that first month and getting through not being able to walk my dogs, not being able to do my own laundry and just do all that stuff that you like to be able to do as a person. And I was the most worried about that. And that was kind of a big deal to me. Um, but after that, I was able to do a little bit more and have a little bit more range of motion. And every single month I have found that I have felt substantially better. And I just want to say for me, it's not only one thing that I do. So if you've watched any of my other videos, I have been, um, like I do, I put the detox that I do in the notes and I've done that before my breast, um, implants came out. I'm doing it after my breast implants. Um, I use a sauna I eat organic. So there's like layers and layers of things that I do. And I think if you haven't had any kind of chronic illness, then you might look at all these things and be like, wow, that's a lot. But when you've lost your health and you just want to feel like yourself again, you're pretty much willing to do whatever it takes to feel good again. And so basically I've done all those things. Um, I will say I have not been in any way religious about using any kind of a scar cream. I have something, but I just forget to use it all the time. And honestly, I'm always in, you know, like if, if I'm in a swimsuit or something like that, my scars are completely covered. So I'm not really worried if I have some scars. I feel like this is just an experience that I had. Um, but overall the, if, you know, I'm sure if anybody's thinking about getting this done and they bothered getting breast implants in the first place, then you might also be worried about how am I going to look after? Obviously, it depends on your doctor. I've seen some really different stuff. Um, depends what you started with. Um, I personally am super happy with how I look. Um, it did take some getting used to just because I went for nine years being a completely different size. Um, what is funny is I actually fit in almost all of my old bras. If they were a lower cut bra, I still fit in them, even though my breast implants were 300 cc's. Um, I did feel like I bought certain stuff that I really didn't use. Like I bought, a, everybody said you need like a zillion pillows around you. And I didn't, I had a, like a ramp pillow, a wedge pillow. And I did use that to sleep elevated. Other than that, all the pillows that I bought were a super big waste of time and money. Um, I bought a mastectomy pillow and <laughs> I bought it from Amazon and it literally had needles in it. 
Um, so that was really low quality. So probably if you get a mastectomy pillow, I might not buy it from Amazon because they definitely did not have good quality control. And that was like the worst thing in the world to get stuck with needles. Um, but anyway, those are, those are the main things. I'm just curious if anybody has, even if you're not thinking of getting this done and you're just on here and you're just listening, please feel free to hop into the comments and let me know what brought you on here today. Sorry to be drinking so much water, but I'm so thirsty. I'm in Aspen, Colorado, and it is just starting to snow. So it is pretty dry here, and I feel like I need a lot more water than I usually do. So anyway, I didn't really know if anybody was interested in this kind of a live stream. I probably should even announce them a little bit earlier, but I've been getting so many Instagram messages and so many messages on my YouTube as well. So I figured I would just kind of come on and share what my experience was. I mean, my overall experience when people are always asking me, was it worth it to get your breast implants taken out? For me, a thousand percent, it was worth it. Um, it was a great surgery. And even if it hadn't changed my health, I just feel so petite and like myself again. And um, I felt before, I mean, when I had my breast implants in, I want to say I was probably like a 30 G or something like that, which sounds enormous. It was pretty big for my frame. And if I was lifting at the gym, I just didn't feel like I could ever be in a sports bra because it just felt like, you know, so much. Um, so just from an aesthetic, you know, standpoint, it was totally worth it to me. And from a breathing perspective, when, so the doctor gave me back my implants and he let me hold them and obviously they were cleaned off and all of that stuff. And they were pretty large. They were larger than I, you know, thought that they were. And to me, my body is so small and thinking about having something like that crammed into my chest cavity, it just sort of made sense why I was constantly having breathing issues before. Um, my breathing has been so much better. So if all I got was less brain fog, um, much, I don't get, I was getting so many red bumps all in this area and all in my back. And I'm also not getting those anymore. Um, and I still expect even more changes to roll out. Um, but the one implant that was really causing me a lot of pain was actually like permanently folded over into a crescent shape. And I'm not saying, I don't think my doctor that originally did it, did a bad job. I mean, I think it would be nice if maybe plastics, like, so if I do someone's hair, because I'm, I'm a hairstylist, for those of you that don't know, if I do someone's hair, I usually will tell them. So if they want to go from brown to blonde, okay, well, you can do this, but your hair is going to be very damaged. You're, you know, you're going to have breakage. This is going to happen. And if you want to go back, this is going to happen. So I walk them through, through the future. I think it would be nice <laughs> if a plastic surgeon took the time to do well. If you're going to get something major like breast implants, maybe let people know that it's not something that you can just take out and your body just goes right back to normal, or it's going to be a much bigger surgery. I think those things are important to know. Um, you know, why not tell someone that? Um, Tiffany says, I got the live due to me wanting it. Or, or you got the... You got the live due to me wanting it so bad when I was younger, but quickly reversed that notion after hearing and seeing bad stories. So wait, did you, you got the live? Did you, am I missing something that you're saying, Tiffany? I'm so sorry that I'm like, I'm probably reading it wrong, but do you mean that you almost, you almost got them when you were younger as well? And then you decided not to. I mean, I think I had a friend, honestly, that before I got my breast implants said, it's just never a good, she's a doctor. And she said, it's just never a good idea to put a foreign object in your body. And, you know, I'm just the kind of person that when I think I know what I want to do, I don't listen to anybody. And my, my friend is a really good doctor. And I was like, no, it's going to be fine. You'll see. And I did it anyway. Um, and, and that's just life. I mean, I was extremely emotional when I first found out that I needed to get them done. And now it's just sort of like, it's just something that I did. Um, I feel so happy I did it in my, and actually I should also mention, because I told you guys about my, um, my husband, my husband thinks it's great too. He thinks I look great. I mean, he's my husband, of course, he's going to say that, but you know, he's seen my progress and he's like, wow, they've healed up 
so beautifully. You look so good. And he thinks that the, he never saw me this way, this size. And he's like, I just think it makes so much more sense with your petite frame to have, I mean, I'm still, I still have a 30 double D, which is, is a small double D, but you know, I still have that and it's totally fine. Tiffany says, former race car driver, Danica Patrick just talk, talked about the complications she experienced with implants going through countless tests and trying to get a doctor to believe her. Um, yes. And you know, it's crazy. I, I really admire that she did that. I think it was so cool because, you know, there's still people that will try to say that you're making it up if it happened. Pretty much nobody said that to me. I mean, I have a lot of clients that are doctors and nurses and they were like, yeah, of course your body could have a reaction to that. Um, but I mean, you just know it when it happens to you, if they're bothering you, then it just makes sense to get them out. Um, Brittany says, have you had any other type of surgeries? Yes, I had one other type of surgery. So when I was younger, my nose was a little bit bulbous and it always bothered me. And I would go to modeling agencies and, you know, they were like, oh, we would, we would accept you as a model, but your nose is too big. And it bothered me forever. And I lived with it for a really long time. And I finally, I'm very open. I don't care if anybody knows that I did anything. Um, my, my one bit of advice is if you ever decide to get plastic surgery, sit with it, decide that you love yourself, whether you get it or not, and find the very best person. It is not something that you do like as a discount or, you know, you don't scrimp if you do decide you want plastic surgery. So I think when I, I must've gotten it done, I'm 46 now, and I probably did get a rhinoplasty when I was 20, 28 or 30 years old. I can't remember. Um, and he just barely, all he did was slim up the bottom of my nose a little bit. And there was a tiny bump. I still have a tiny bump. My nose, and he left it basically. It was very, 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 um, how do I say it? Extremely minimal. Um, and extremely small. And honestly, I loved what he did. He did, his name was, is Dean, Dean Toriumi. He's in Chicago and he did a beautiful job and I don't think he made it look fake and I still look exactly like myself. And to me, and I'm not saying that no one has to get plastic surgery to feel good. It was just that, okay. So it was the one thing that was really, really bothering me. And other than that, like I like to age as gracefully as possible and do as little as possible. But that was, I mean, I, I think he did a beautiful rhinoplasty. I don't, um, I don't regret it for a second. He made it, um, the way he did it was to make it a little bit bigger. And he said, you're going to look like you have a swollen nose for about two years. And as it heals and as scar tissue forms, it's going to look, um, better and better and it'll get smaller. Um, and Brittany said, oh, so Tiffany says, I meant to say I clicked on the live video. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I love it when you're on any of my videos, Tiffany, and people don't have to be considering getting a breast explant to click on my videos. Like you're always welcome. It was such a big thing. And I feel like if I just share if something's happening, if I'm traveling, if I'm doing something, I share it on YouTube. It's like, that's, I think you can really share a lot of your experiences and maybe your learning experiences and hopefully other people can get some little, um, ideas from them. Um, Brittany asked, so what is my opinion on lip injections? Um, so one of my best friends is a derm surgeon. And so she is, uh, very, very, I don't know how to say it. She knows a lot. And she, she has always told me a lot about injections and all of those different things. Um, I think lip injections in theory could be okay. But the problem is that most people that get lip injections don't look like they have real lips anymore. So this is just me, but whatever people do to their faces with injections, and again, it's none of my business, but I don't like the look when people look really injected. I know that everybody, um, I'm not trying to put down the Kardashians. I know everybody loves the Kardashians and I think they're very pretty, but there's a lot going on. And um, I don't know, I guess at the end of the day, and it's kind of funny for me to say this because of course I'm talking about the fact that I had breast implants. Um, just sometimes with the lip injections, I feel like people are trying to look so fake. And what can happen is just that people kind of ruin their natural lip line. So 
I don't know, I've just seen so many celebrities that had such beautiful faces. And instead of kind of aging naturally, they did a lot of stuff to their faces and they don't even look like, hu like they don't look quite human to me. So they do a lot of filler under their eyes. And then you're supposed to have, you know, a concave area under your eye. And I think people could do a tiny bit of filler if they want to do some here, but people do so much filler that they look like they're storing chipmunks for the wind. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, not chipmunks. Um, how do I say it? Uh, what do chipmunks store in uh, like acorns in their cheeks for the winter time? I just think less is more and anything that you do that makes you look like you is the most beautiful thing. Like none of us are airbrushed looking humans. We all have our own stuff. Um, and there's just so much stuff that's done now. Um, Brittany says, exactly. I feel like everyone gets it done these days. Such a hard stigma to live up to. And I'm lucky that I'm married. I'm, yeah, I know. And I'm married too. And my husband likes that I look natural. Um, it's interesting. I'm digressing a little bit, but so I'm in Aspen, Colorado right now. And it is not everybody. There's, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of natural looking people too, but there are so many women that have had so much done to their faces and I don't think they, they don't look old. They don't look young. They just look like they've had a lot of filler and a lot of stuff and they don't look natural. So I like just, I always say less is more. So I'm very open. I have been since I was 28 because my best friend is a derm surgeon and just teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny amounts. So I can still move my face. Um, I probably can't make like a full wrinkle, but I do get I just like just a tiny little amount. So I, sorry, I'm just an open book. I'll always tell you guys um, whatever I do because I don't know. It's like I've done a very light laser treatment called Clear and Brilliant at my dermatologist's office. Um, it was like a one hour laser treatment and no downtime. I like things like that. And actually, I, I was talking to my best friend and she said that I might want to consider just not even doing Botox and just doing laser because you can do similar things um, to, uh, how do I say it? Similar things to Botox without having Botox. Um, how much is Botox usually, does my husband get it? Honestly, I don't even know how much it usually is because um, my person that does it in Boston, who, you know, if I do get it again, I'll be flying back to see. Actually, I send him so many clients because um, a lot of people ask me where I get my stuff. They kind of know. They're like, you probably can't be 46 and not be doing anything to your face. So people just ask me, do you get Botox? And I always send them to him. And because I send him probably... I don't even know, three clients in between every visit. Don't really know how much he charges because um, he doesn't charge me his regular price just because I send him so many um, friends and clients and things like that. Um, the only person that ever complained about him was this woman that um, was a client at my salon that had way too much filler. And I was thinking maybe he could fix it or make her look more natural. And she was like, oh, he did it. And it looks like I don't even get injections. And I was like, that's kind of the point, you know, to not look like you get injections. That's kind of pretty, you know, but um, she did not like that. Um, Brittany asked, does the laser hurt? Um, yeah, I thought so. I mean, it definitely wasn't, I am very sensitive. It definitely wasn't like nothing. It wasn't horrible. They put some numbing stuff on my entire face first, um, but it was definitely, I don't even know. I don't know what it felt like, but it was uncomfortable, but it was pretty fast. Um, and if you ever want to look at it, you can, if you look in all my videos, there's a thing that says um, clear and brilliant if you search my videos. And I did a whole video about it just explaining the process. And I think I took photos of my face every day just so you could see what it looked like. It looked fine the next day and I could put makeup on it. It was just super, super, I don't even know how to say it, like dry. And so if you would try to take like a cotton ball with toner and put it on, you couldn't move it on your skin. But I could go to work every single day and it made my face look great. I mean, I would definitely like to do it again. I'm just, I'm always so busy. I do stuff to take care of myself, but sometimes I just don't stop. Um, maybe, uh, who knows, maybe I'll do it when I go um, when I go home to visit my family at some point because I will definitely be going back to see my mom because I mean, I only haven't seen her in about six weeks, but that's a long time for me. Um, I started getting Botox when I was 28. And the reason that I did is that my best friend is a dermatologist and she um, 
I was just asking her, I was like, I'm putting my makeup on and my, I've noticed, I noticed that my eyelid was like drooping down. And I just asked her if there was like a special cream I could get. I'm like, is there a cream I can get that will make my eyelid lift up? And she said, um, oh gosh, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to block this creepy person. That's like, how do I say, I'll just hide them. They're, they're texting about dating and girls on my live stream. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> people, I don't usually get those on my live streams, but maybe, oh, probably because I had the word breast in the title. God, no, it didn't mean that I wanted a dating site. Um, anyway, so I got it, started getting it when I was 28 because she said, you know, if you just get a teeny tiny bit of Botox, it will actually just lift your lid up a little bit. Um, but the other advice she always gives me is just like drink a lot of water. Um, and she has me put a tiny bit of Celtic sea salt in it so that I actually hold on to my hydration as well. So she's pretty easygoing about the little beauty tips that she gives me, but those are the main things. Um, yeah, so that's really all that I do. I haven't done any other crazy things. I haven't done any other body surgeries. I would never do anything like liposuction, I'm not trying to put anybody down if they would do that. I just feel like your body has a equilibrium that it wants. And if you mess with that equilibrium too much, your body doesn't like it. So um, overall, I'm really happy with my body. I do it through diet and exercise. And if I could go back to, gosh, if I'm 46, I think I got those breast implants when I was like 30. I think I got them when I was 36, honestly. Um, but if I could go back in time, I would just tell myself that, you know, you don't have to be perfect. And if I could go back in time, I would also know that I had them. It's up to you. It's your body. I mean, this is my information. You should know that this could happen to you. Um, women are not making it up when they do get sick. Um, and it doesn't necessarily happen right away. So I don't think I got sick right away from having breast implants, but I certainly don't think that, um, they added no Brittany. So I was with, um, I had a different boyfriend before my husband who was just a, non-committal man that never made me feel that good. And, um, I think I was probably always looking for his approval and I didn't have my confidence that I have today. I mean, the person that I am today is so different. So I dated this person, I think from 34 until 38. And, um, he was just a non-committal man that it was like, I never met his, his standards. And I was always trying to get his attention. And I finally, he broke up with me in a post-it note. Oh no, no, not a post-it note. I'm sorry, a text. It was the post-it note with Sarah from um, Sarah Jessica Parker. So he broke up with me in a text message. Um, I was on the train on the way to New York and he broke up with me and it was so upsetting. And I remember looking at that note and, um, you know, that text and he shut off his phone and never talking to him again. And then working on my confidence and working on who I was and setting up my own boundaries and sounds so funny, but there were eight months between this person that I broke up with and my husband and the person that I broke up with hundred percent loved that I got breast implants. You know, he was like, Oh, great. That's going to look great. You know, the, the more that I could be society's perfection, the happier he would be, but never happy. And you know, my husband is just like, as soon as he met me, he just thought I was like the cutest, best person ever. And he only had such amazing, kind things to say about me. So were I with Jeff, I think it probably would have been a different story, but they were just part of my stuff and part of what happened. And, um, and it's funny because, you know, Brittany, it's like, I learned so much from like all of those things that happened to me and the different things that I've been working on getting better from, they gave me a lot of insight on helping other people. And they gave me a lot of insight on maybe how to help my pets or how, like, for instance, I used to have so much trouble with high altitude when I had my implants in. And so it let me know, okay, my pets have some illnesses too. I'm not going to bring them straight into high altitude. I'm going to do it gradually. So every experience, if it makes any sense, was useful. And I don't regret having it. Um, Brittany says, did Teddy ever meet him? My husband, I hope Teddy, oh, did Teddy meet the other guy? <laughs> Teddy did not like him. Um, so I don't think Teddy did. Yes, Teddy definitely met the old boyfriend because um, I was with him for a long time when I had Teddy. And um, 
he had an all white house. He was very picky and very picky about what Teddy would do and things. And Teddy tried to pee on my old boyfriend's things all the time. So he had a really expensive house. And I remember he had really expensive speakers and Teddy went right up and he peed on his speakers. And I remember seeing it and I didn't want the boyfriend to know. So I like skidded out of my room and like cleaned it up before he could see it and hit it because I didn't want him to be mad at Teddy. Um, Teddy did know my husband and my husband treated Teddy like a, like a king. And when Teddy was ill, I remember Jeff just, you know, picking him up and just being so gentle about the way he set him on the bed or grilling him filet mignon because that was when Teddy got really ill and he was really close to dying. He wouldn't really eat anything, but he loved filet mignon and he lit up. So my husband would make him homemade, fresh grilled filet mignon with no salt for every single meal, or he would spoon feed him baby food. Um, so I'm always really glad that he got to know my husband and that my husband took care of Teddy because he took care of him just so beautifully. And he was so nice. Um, how did I meet my husband? Oh my gosh, that's a really good story. So I'm in Aspen, Colorado right now. Um, growing up, I grew up in New Hampshire in this really tiny town of, I don't even know, 1100 people. And there's not that much to do in New Hampshire except athletic stuff. So I played soccer. I was on two downhill ski teams. I was on the mountain bike team. I rode horses. I show jumped. If there was an activity, I did it. And so about seven years ago, when I met my husband, um, I hadn't skied in a long time and we had a ton of blizzards in New Hampshire and Boston as well. So it was almost like in Boston, I had a great time and called my godmother and said, oh my gosh, I have not skied since I was whatever, 22, 26, something like that. And it was so much fun next year, instead of going, I used to go on like, you know, LA and Miami vacations and, and stuff like that. And I said, next year, I'm going to go on an active vacation and go to Aspen instead of the vacations I usually do. And she said, you should go now because anything that you want to do, you should do right away. You should never put off things that you want to do in life because you never know if you have tomorrow. So I flew to Aspen, Colorado all by myself. Um, and this was part of my confidence. I was dating and, you know, I had broken up with that boyfriend who was really just, he just wasn't the best. And, um, I walked into my husband, Jeff's ski shop to rent skis. And, um, if you guys haven't seen my husband, wait, I have to show you. He is a, he's a dreamboat. He's so handsome. And so I walked into his ski shop and I saw this beautiful, beautiful man. And, um, that was, that was how I met my husband. Literally that, that was it. I'm trying to find my Teddy album because wouldn't it be nice if it would go into album so I could show you my husband with Teddy because there is a really cute picture. Let's see. Um, but basically I met him in Aspen. He chased me for a super, super long time. Um, guys, if you haven't seen Teddy, um, that is Teddy, by the way. He's the most beautiful one ear up, one ear down, the most beautiful little guy in the entire world. And um, this is my husband. So I walked into the ski shop and I saw this gorgeous dreamboat behind the counter and had such a crush on him. And he wound up um, asking me to go skiing the next day. And I thought, I actually didn't think he could possibly be as nice of a person as he is. Um, and he is actually just as nice or nicer now than, um, than I even thought he was right away. So that was how I met him. He traveled to Boston to see me and we were long distance for a super long time. So he's been in Aspen and I've been in Boston and we actually, we kept a residence in Aspen and Boston um, but he was only with me like a third of the year. And this year we decided to be together. So I left my business. My business is still going in Boston. We sold our condo and we've been on the road just traveling in an RV, spending time together, but we've been stationary in Aspen for the month. So it was a really cute way, the, um, the way that I met him. And he's just a very kind person that supports me which is how it's supposed to be, right? Like it's, it's so basic, but it was not the easiest thing to wrap my brain around finding someone like that. Um, he does have kids, Brittany. He has, um, so Jeff is 10 years older than I am and he has, um, three kids, two beautiful, beautiful daughters and one just super, super nice son. Um, his kids are really lovely. I haven't gotten to spend um, a lot of time with his daughters, but we're going to be out, 
um, in Arizona soon so we can spend a little bit more time with them. And I'm super excited. Um, I would have also just so just kind of putting it out there, I would have had kids too had I met the right person a little bit sooner, but it felt like just so rushed to do everything. So I have fur kids and I can borrow my husband's kids who are all in their 20s and are just like very, you know, beautiful, great kids. So guys, if you have any other questions, and it doesn't have to be about explant, but if you have any other questions, just let me know. I always love chatting with you guys. Um, just wanted to hop on here. It says, Brittany says, I am a stepmom. Um, how is it? I am so scared to have my own. So for now, I have a fur baby. Um, I think it's great to be a stepmom. I mean, I would have also loved to, to have, you know, not that they're not my kids, but to have my own kids, um, which I think is wonderful too. Um, if you think you want to have kids, don't wait. Cause you know, as women, I mean, I could still have kids. I'm sure if I really wanted to, but I'm sort of like, I wanted to clear up all my health issues as well. And I felt like it might not be really good with all of the things that have happened to even try, but, um, my fur babies are so wonderful and I get to always borrow, um, my husband's kids, which is so, so nice. So it's, it's so funny to, uh, it's so funny to even think that I'm a stepmom, but yes, I am a stepmom. Guys, it was so fun coming on here today. And um, if anybody watches this also, when we're not live anymore, feel free to drop things into um, into the comments. Um, I just always want to make myself available to people the way that people made a, you know themselves available to me because I could not have gone through my explant if so many nice women didn't tell me how it was. One thing I forgot to mention it was never painful for me. I never took one painkiller. Um, I took extra strength Tylenol for a few days. I was a little bit sore. It was fine. I thought it was going to be terrible. It was absolutely fine. It was no big deal. Um, so just wanted to throw that in just at least for my surgeon, it was not a painful experience at all whatsoever. So Brittany, it was so nice to see you on here too. Thank you so much for talking with me as well. Always love your questions um, and hope that stuff was helpful. And yeah, be careful of the lip injections because I think they can they can be a lot. I usually just kind of like overline my lips a little bit. I think that looks good. But it was so nice chatting with you guys. Um, I put some links below in the description like I always do. Um, I bought a ton of bras that I thought were going to be great when I had my surgery and a lot of them were just painful or uncomfortable or whatever and a waste of money. So I put my two favorites. One was just a cheap fruit of the loom bra, bought it sizes, sizes too big, pack some sweatpants, which are way too big for you. You will thank me. Um, and the other bra that I put in there is really, really expensive. It's good for about three weeks or a month out when you want something really nice and comfortable. Um, Last thing, just want to throw this in here for anybody that's thinking about explant, is that I do have some regular underwire bras now. I almost never wear them. So if you get one and you're thinking you're going to get a bunch of bras after, I would say maybe wait for a while because they hit your incision exactly and they're just not that comfortable. So those are just my little thoughts. You guys, it was so fun chatting with you. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.